To start off this course, I'm going to give you a short workspace tour and then I'll be getting into detail of the various panels, effects and brushes later on. When you first open up Painter Essentials 5, you will be greeted by this little welcome window. On the top half, you can see some examples of artwork that were created with this software. On the bottom left, you can just see two quick start options for opening an existing image. And on the right hand side, there are just some quick links to painter related things. By clicking on the example pictures on the top half, you can look at more sample paintings and drawings and see which kinds of brushes were primarily used, which is really inspiring, I think. You then can also choose from the document templates you are provided with on bottom right. Up here you'll find the menu bar with all its drop down menus. In the first one we are looking at the preferences where you can adjust various options. I think the preset options are quite alright to work with. If you are experiencing performance issues whilst working with complex brushes or big sizes, you might want to change up a few things. A tip to make everything faster would be setting the undo levels lower. The undos are the number of times you can undo your actions and go backwards. Like it says here on the bottom, you must restart Painter Essentials to have your changes take effect. Next is the menu point file. Here you can open up an existing image or open up a new one. When creating a new canvas, you can have your size shown in various measurement options like inches, centimeters and so on. Below that you can choose your resolution. If you are making an image for your screen or the internet, 150 is alright. If you want to print in good quality, however, I do recommend making your image 300 pixels per inch at least. Then you can choose your colors. There are different ways of finding your desired background color. Some of them being kind of gimmicky, like the crayons. Then you are able to choose a paper texture. This will affect the way the brushes are going to react to the canvas. You can change that up later if you wish in the toolbox. After you've opened up a new image, you will want to save that. By going on File, Save Image As, you will get to this window. Here you can choose from seven different file formats. I recommend using the Paint RIF file for works in progress. If you are going to be switching between Photoshop and Painter, you will want to choose the PSD file. For sending an image via email or using it online, JPEG is a good option. It's a handy format for compressing an image without losing too much quality. Remember though, saving over and over a JPEG image will make the quality loss visible. If you want to save an image for the web with a transparent part or a transparent background, you will want to use the PNG. But I will add a file format information PDF to download for you, where you can read all about those seven formats. Also, there is a keyboard shortcut PDF for you ready to download. Many of the tools you'll use will be so much more convenient if you can use a keyboard shortcut rather than clicking on the actual tool. Throughout the course I will however recommend my favorite shortcuts to you anyway. In the next menu section you can undo your last action or fade it out. The options below are for your selections. If you select a part of your image, you can copy that and paste it on top in a new layer or in a new image. If you choose paste in place, it will sit exactly on top of your source image on a new layer. In the menu bar canvas, you are able to resize your image. You are provided with the information about the current file size and below you can actually resize your image. With choosing the canvas size, you can add more room to your existing image without changing the actual size of the current image. You can choose from adding to the top or the bottom or the sides. 
The next one is the rotate canvas option. Here you can obviously rotate your image, but you can also flip it, which actually means mirroring it horizontally or vertically. The menu bar layers lets you arrange your layers which are in the layers palette. The general actions like creating a new one, dropping them, which means flattening your layers down, and deleting them you can easily do with the palette. I'll be showing you that later on. Also, instead of clicking on the move to bottom or move to top, you can just drag them by hand up and down. This next menu bar lets you control your selection. First, you can select all. You can see something is selected when the tiny moving black and white lines appear. None deselects and invert selection turns your selection the other way around. That's only useful if your selection doesn't fill the whole image. You can fill a selection area with color, paint in that selection, cut it out or copy and paste it. You can make your selection border softer by manually changing the feather option or by choosing smooth. Also, you can add a second selection by choosing border, so it kind of, kind of creates a frame. The next menu bar is the effects. I'm going to go into detail about them later on. In the menu bar window you can actually change your workspace as you wish. The first part lets you arrange your view by zooming in and out. The two bigger sections below are your palettes and panels. The ones with the tick symbol are visible and the ones without them aren't. You then are able to move around your palettes as you wish by dragging them. You can also group them or have them separate, just the way it works best for you. You are also able to save your workspace layout and if you mix it up or someone else uses your computer, you can always switch back to your perfect layout you've saved.